Francisco Lindor is a shortstop for the New York Mets. He's in his current second season for the Mets, and he's off to a strange start. I don't know if anyone saw, but he got wailed by a wild pitch in last night's game. Thank God he had that protective plate on the helmet because I believe he'd be getting his mouth wired shut right now as we're speaking. But Francisco Lindor has been an interesting player. He was he started his career with the Cleveland Indians, now the Guardians. I don't really know what the Guardians is, but I haven't really like, really looked into it. I don't live in Cleveland. I'm a Phillies fan, so hey, that's fine. He's had a pretty good career. He has won awards like a gold glove and a silver slugger. But last year for the Mets, he signed a big contract and he just didn't really live up to the potential that he has throughout other seasons of his career. Now, in his first season, he had an average of over 300. He played just about 100 games, but I will give him credit that he has been pretty healthy. He's been he's played almost every game, almost every season. So you can kind of attest to that, you know, you are a durable enough player. But in 2021, he played 125 games and only finished with a 230 average. 20 home runs, so he's low on the home runs, lowest on the average, the stolen bases. His strikeouts were okay, they were moderate, not as high as other seasons, but just around where he typically would be. And the Mets need Francisco Lindor. They have a lot of players that they got rid of. Now, the pitching staff is decent. Unfortunately, Jacob DeGrom right now is out, so it's on the hands of Max Scherzer, and that's a huge signing. That in itself can change the entire perspective of a team, no matter what team he's on, even if he's on, on the team like the Oakland A's. And I don't want to go into that because everyone's seen the reports of certain players making more money than entire team's payroll. That's just insane to me that one player like Max Scherzer can make more than an entire play, entire team's payroll. But markets are different, areas are different, so that's a whole nother conversation, but it shouldn't be that skewed. I mean, that's kind of insane. So, when you're looking at the roster for the actual fielding and the batting, oh man, I mean, Robinson Cano? What are you doing, man? I think he's like 39, 40 years old. You got Lindor, you got Alonzo, you got Marte, you know, you got some okay players, but out of Lindor, who can you really trust? I mean, you had Baez, got rid of him. You had Jonathan Villar, got rid of him, you know, and hey, I get it. You want to get your pitching staff and all this stuff, but can Lindor be that 2015, 2016 type of player that he was in Cleveland for the Mets? And I'm sure that's what they were kind of paying for. That's what they're hoping for. And hopefully with another season under your belt, now you have more pitching. But if you're looking at the division, the Phillies got better. The Braves didn't really miss miss a beat, even though getting rid of Freddie Freeman, they have, um, I believe his name is Matt Olson. And so it, it's not a clear-cut winnable division. And now you need Lindor to be that offensive cornerstone. And I just don't know if he can be looking at his year from last year. I mean, it's all-time lows for almost everything. So with this season coming up, just starting two games in, outside of getting cracked in the face, hopefully he can turn around for himself, for his team. Hopefully the pitching staff can be healthy enough to stay, you know, on top of their game, but as a Phillies fan, I'm hoping for absolute chaos and absolute garbage and someone gets hurt, someone breaks breaks a leg, but let us know in the comment section below how critical do you think Lindor has to be for the offensive side of the ball for, for this staff and this rotation. Let us know in the comment section below and we'll see you guys next time.